By this point, you've downloaded, installed, and activated both the Events Calendar 2.0 and Events Calendar Pro 2.0. That's great, but how do you create events now? Well, that's what I want to focus on for the next few minutes is the event creation process, setting up your first events so that you know exactly what you're doing. I've got everything set up, so all I need to worry about is logging into my dashboard and finding this events section in the left-hand sidebar. And I know that I have both core and proactive because I see five items here. If I had just the core free version active, saved venues and saved organizers would not be appearing here because those are a pro exclusive feature. It doesn't really matter at this point because all we're concerned about is add new, which everybody sees. We're going to go ahead and create our first event right now. And you'll notice that once you get into this page, it looks almost identical to a regular post creation page. If you've created regular posts here in WordPress, you're going to have no problem setting up events. I have my title, my description, my publish box, my event categories, and then down below, which we'll get into in a minute, the actual event customization details where I say where the event is taking place, when it's taking place, etc. But what is this event going to be? Well, I'm going to call it the Tribe Launch Party. Once I give it the title and scroll down into this section down below into the description, you'll notice it'll automatically create a permalink for me based upon that title, which is great. And now here's where I enter my description. If I had more time, I'd make this into something that was nicely styled, had a lot of images, etc. in it. Those will carry over fine to the front end if you do. But since we're on a time crunch for the screencast, I'm just going to give it this simple one sentence description. Might as well set my categories now because I know what they are. And now I'm going to scroll down to the actual event details. First thing I set is the time and date. You'll notice it's going to default to taking place today from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. with no recurrence details specified. I can make it an all-day event by checking this box. You'll notice that takes away the time offerings. And I can make it recurring if I go into this drop-down and set one of these options. Recurrence we've handled in a separate screencast and written documentation elsewhere, so I'm not going to worry about that now. Suffice to say, it's going to default to none, but you could make it every day, week, month, year, or custom. This party is a one-time thing, though, so there's no sense in having it recur anyway. The event doesn't need to be all day because that would be too intense for a party, so let's make it happen next Saturday from 8 o'clock p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. So we're all set with the date and time. Now where is it taking place? Well, if I had used venues in the past on this install, there would be a drop down right here showing me the saved venues that I have to pick from. Now again, that's a pro exclusive feature. Since I haven't used any venues, since this is a new install though, I'm gonna have to create a new venue here. That's fine. The first thing I want to plug in is the venue name. I'm going to add the details as well for the address. Now, this is not my real address, so don't try to find me here. You'll notice once I select a country from the drop down here, state or province becomes a drop down that I can pick from. I can enter the zip code and the phone number as well. It's important to note that you don't have to enter all the venue details. You can be as limited as you want on the venue. If you just want to have it take place in a certain city, certain country, whatever, feel free to do so. You don't have to fill in all these fields. The only one that is definitely required is the venue name. If you don't include a venue name, it's going to create this venue called unnamed venue, which will look weird for you and might confuse your front end readers. So make sure you're giving it a cool venue name or something that specifies what it is. Down below we also have these two checkboxes, Show Google Maps Link and Show Google Map. These two both serve a distinct purpose. The Show Google Maps Link will actually bring a button onto the front end event that people can click and go over to view this map on Google's Maps page. And the Show Google Map will actually bring up an embedded map in the front end listing so that people can see without having to leave the page where exactly this is taking place. I want to show both of those here. So that takes place of where, or excuse me, that takes care of where this is taking place. Now we just have to see who the organizer is. And the organizer I could leave blank entirely if I wanted to. I could also pick from a saved existing organizer if I wish to. I'm going to create myself as the organizer here because I am putting this on. I'm not going to include my phone number, but I will include a website for me which you'll see how this operates on the front end in a minute. And I'll add my email address so if somebody wants to contact me about the party in advance, they can. 
Now, if I get configured custom fields under the settings page, which if I'm a pro user, I have the option to do, I could also add additional hard-coded data that will appear above the event description on the front end, uh, in addition to the start time, end time, venue, etc. Since this is a party and I configured these custom fields specifically for our party, I'm going to take advantage of them. Now, there's a couple different styles here. There is a there are radio buttons, there are checkboxes, there are drop downs. We've covered all that in a separate screencast, so I'm not going to walk into how you configure it. I'm just going to show what we're going to set here. I'm going to select the one type of prize that I'm offered up. I have a few caterers coming in, so I'm going to pick three of the four offerings from the catering section. And is this open to the public? Yes, it's going to be open to the public. As for the cost, if I leave it blank, nothing's going to show up. If I enter zero, it's going to treat it as free. This one, we're asking everybody to give us a dollar. So I'm going to set one dollar as the cost. Here's a little blurb about finding additional add-ons. If I want to click over to the tribe site, I can get those there. Could add an excerpt if I wanted to. Might as well do so, so we can see how that appears on the front end. I could change the author if I want to. I'm not going to worry about that. So now all I need to worry about is going up and setting the publication details. Like any other WordPress post, I do have the option of making it uh, scheduled for some time in the future. I have the option of making it visible to only people with a password, etc. But I'm not worried about any of that. I just want to publish it so this goes live now. So I'm going to do it. I hit the publish button. When it refreshes, confirming that it's published, I will have a link to view the finished product over on the front end of the site. And when I click that, it'll bring me there directly. So let's see how this ultimately worked out. Here we go. We see exactly everything that we entered is showing up as it should. The event title, the start time, end time, the cost, the categories I assigned it to, which you'll see are hot links that people can click to view all the posts assigned to that given category. Since I don't have much other content, that isn't going to come in handy right now, but we'll take a look at one of those in a minute anyway. The organizer name, you'll notice that's a hot link, and you'll notice that where it's taking me is to the URL I configured for that organizer. There's a separate field for that organizer's email, which is also a link that, if clicked, will open up a new message to that person. The venue, also a link. We'll see in a minute what front-end venue pages look like. And then the venue details appear over here. The phone number, the address. You'll see I have my Google Map link, which I'm also opening in a new tab, so we can check out in a second. I have the prizes, the caterers, and whether it's open to the public. Scrolling down even further, you'll see that we actually have our embedded map showing up as it should. And below that, the description. Lastly, I can also add it to Google Calendar or add it to iCal. I'm not going to worry about that now because I'm hosting this event. I already know that it's taking place. But you can do that if you wish to. Now let's check out some of these other loops where this content's going to appear that I just opened these links for. A category loop is just going to be all the posts from a given category. Now since I have my default showing me grid view, that's what it's going to show up. And since I only have one post created, the tribe launch party, it's the only thing showing up on here for this category. The front end venue pages are a new feature, and those are for pro exclusive users. Uh, you see these, they show everything that takes place at a given venue. Have the map, have the details about that venue, and then I have upcoming events at this venue. Now, front end venue pages do not appear in grid view at all. They're always going to be list view for the time being. And since I only have one event, obviously there's only one event showing up in this upcoming events list. Lastly, the Maps button, this is just taking you over to Google Maps. You can see the Street View option, which you can't do on the site, etc. There's just more you can do here if you wish to, but again, people who click this will be taken away from my site and from my event listing. So that pretty much takes care of the single event, but let's do one more thing. Let's say that you want to add this event to your header menu. This is a big thing. You have a lot of people coming to the site, and you want them all to be aware of this event and that it's taking place. That's easy to do. We've configured it so that now you can actually add events very easily to the header menu, just like you would any post or page elsewhere on the site. Getting back into the back end here, first thing I'm going to do from my dashboard is find Appearance, Menus, and once I click in there, it'll take me to my header menu. Now what, what you see on this page that we're landing on here is going to correspond exactly to what you see on the home page, Home, About, Contact Me, in the header nav. You'll see if I go over to the front end of the site and scroll up a bit, home, about, contact me are the items you see in my header navigation. So I want to add this party so that people see it right when they come to the site. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go below categories into events. 
My most recent one is going to show up right here, the tribe launch party. That's what we want. So I'm going to put the checkbox next to it and just hit add to menu. I also have more events related stuff that I could add there if I wanted as well. I could add the venue, I could add the organizer, I could add the event category, but really that's not what I'm concerned with. I'm just concerned with this single event. If I expand it, I can even change the label so that even though the post will still be titled tribe launch party, the label in the header menu says something different. Launch party next Saturday. Save menu. Once it saves, I'll go back over, toggle to the front end, refresh my site there. And if all went according to plan, we'll now be seeing, in addition to home, about, contact me, our event listing showing up here to the right. Lo and behold, there it is. Nothing too surprising when I click into it, just takes me to that event listing we created a few minutes ago. Now that's pretty much the bare bones of event creation. There's obviously quite a bit more you can do. I just wanted to walk you through how, if you've never used the plugin before, to set up an event from scratch. Thanks a lot and uh, feel free to pose any questions in the support forum.